Hi, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Ryan. I am the marketing coordinator for Magic Rent to Own. I am here with Joe Luzak today. He is the sales director for Magic. Uh, one of the big changes is social media. It's really like a digital handshake now. We can send that paperwork to the customer's phone, and they can sign right then and there. Um, really changes the game. All right, Joe, so I would like to bring up the topic of Google reviews. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know that it's something that uh, Magic excels in, mm -hmm. uh, something we take pride in. Uh, so if you could please touch on that. Yeah, so Google is interesting because a lot of times when you do a Google search, what do you see? Whatever the highest rated business is, unless they're paying for their ads, would be at the top versus the lowest would be at the bottom or a second page or third page, whatever it is on the internet. Um, no one goes there. Nobody goes there. No, no one ever goes past page one. <laughs> at least I don't. <laughs> but um, I think where we excel is the fact that all of our reviews are organic, meaning that when we go into a customer's house, and for anybody that's listening to the, to the pod, we'll, we'll be able to attest to this. We like to ask, hey, if you feel that our service was great today, we'd ask you to give us a review. It's not one of those things where people will get reviews, hey, I'd really appreciate it, give me a five star. If you can't give me a five star, then don't worry about it. Um, it's whatever you feel we did, whether that's a one star or a five star, we want that feedback because we want to get better. We always want to evolve. Um, and I'm, all, I'm super pumped about this because if you look at any one of our stores, we have hundreds of positive reviews. Tons of them are five star. I would, I'd be hard pressed to say we have a store under a 4.8 overall average uh, on their Google reviews. And those are just genuine customers that have genuine experiences with us. And then they interact with our delivery teams. They're the last people to see these folks setting everything up and taking care of them. And it's just, uh, it's overwhelming sometimes to see kind of that outpour of support and love for these guys um, that are out there doing what they do every single day. So I think that's something really, really cool that really stands out for us. Yeah, I know we definitely take pride in it. And another piece of that uh, to mention as well is anything that's less than a five star, um, typically the owner is on top of that mm -hmm. and responding personally um, to try to help and correct the issue and fix and um, you know do what it is that is required for, for us to be better. Oh yeah, and I think that's another point that I, I, I think makes us stand apart is mistakes are okay. Things are gonna go wrong, we're all human beings. Our whole objective is when something goes wrong, uh, if the experience isn't a five star, well, what happened at that point? Is it maybe something that we didn't cover in training? Is it something that maybe um, the, the person that they were interacting with didn't really know, didn't know what to do? Um, well, we go back to the drawing board and say, hey, let's just go through the process again. Let's just work through this um, so we can provide that experience. Whereas I think in some businesses, the uh, the standard practice would be, oh, if you don't give me this positive review and it's not at this level, well then there's some type of uh, corrective action that needs to happen. And I think that really, it strips away from, again, what, who we are. You know, it's all about, we're all human beings. We're all here to help each other out. So if we see something that's not 100% uh, positive, well, that's great because that's good feedback for us to get better and evolve, so. All about fixing the problem. That's what we do. I like it. I'd like to discuss some of the negative um, misconceptions of, of rent to own in the industry itself. If you okay. could. Yeah. So um, I think you're similar to that. Before I started working in rent to own, I don't know that I've ever stepped foot in a rent to own before. I didn't really know much about it. I can tell you a little story that when I was 18, really just out on my own, um, I went to a rent to own really not knowing what was going on. I had one interaction, and that interaction was, I think it was a washer and dryer from my first apartment. And so I got it. They delivered it, they put it in there, and really I signed for a lot of things, but when I looked at what I was gonna spend on this product, it, it really blew my mind. It, it seemed, I didn't have any understanding as to why it was this much, and I think within 24 hours, I was like, I'm out, I'm done, I can't do it. and. It, it set a tone for me on what I was to expect. Um, later, and, and to future, uh, to where we're at right now, I think the, the biggest misconception is the amount of money someone's gonna spend on something to get it. And I think that is a, it's a challenge for sure. But I think that 
the, the goal for us is to get you to ownership with the least amount of money spent. Understanding that, you know, when you look at big retailers, they have a purchasing power that you don't see in most other places. They're buying hundreds of millions of dollars of product and they're able to get vendors to push those costs down really, really low. Um, whereas in rent own what you're really paying for is the convenience of having it today, um, a, a low weekly rate or a monthly rate or every two weeks or whatever your particular uh, circumstances are. But it's about the convenience of being able to have something today and have it at a low weekly rate that makes sense and understand that the service we provide is, is leagues above what you're gonna get in the retail standpoint. So that first misconception is probably the, hard, the hardest to overcome um, because you, you look at the, the full term, but I really think the real problem is with that is a lack of transparency. Um, looking at my very first circumstance, and this is going back, I won't you know, age myself at this point, but it was a really long time ago, <laughs> probably 30 years ago. So um, at that time, what was happening behind the scenes wasn't really known to the customer, I don't think. And I think that's why I had that crazy interaction and then never stepped foot in another store again up until the point that I came to work for Magic. Um, I think we are very transparent about the transaction and what's going on. We let people know this is what you spend. You have six months to, to pay it off. If you can do that, great. But here's your safeguard. There's a minimum per week. And if you want to take that out further, you're, you're going to spend a little more on it. However, it works within your budget and you can do that. Now, if you're someone that is a little bit better at putting extra money into things and whatnot, we'll work with you to do that. Our goal is to get you to ownership as quickly as possible. Our goal isn't, and I think this is where that misconception comes from, is some rent-to-own businesses really just squeeze every dollar out of their, their customers and by the time they get to the end of the process, they're, they're, they're disgusted with it because they feel taken advantage of as well they should. And I think it's because they're not told. It's because there's no transparency. That's where things go sideways. So we like to sit down with a rental agreement and go over every aspect of it. They understand if they want to give it back and they don't want to lose their investment. Hey, come back to us in six months, a year from now. The money you paid into this, we'll let you reinstate you know, that same item or something similar, or in some cases, something different altogether, but they don't lose their initial investment. You know, they're able to carry some of that money over, which I think is really good, and it, and it really speaks to um, how do we overcome stuff like that. So I think that would be one of the big misconceptions of Red Dome. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, just really explaining that, like, like you were saying, the, 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 the really explaining like the same as cash and the, um, the different aspects of, of how the business works, um, to really give the customer the best advantage of, again, owning it and, and, and making it theirs and spending as little as possible um, is really the advantage that we have and what, what we try to do. Um, <clears throat> I know I, also uh, some, of our, some of our competitors will um, push things out um, just to try to get that sale, whereas our goal is to um, fit somebody's budget within their means mm -hmm. so that they can own it. Um, I think one of the misconceptions rent to own gets is that we want to come pick it up, that we want to take it back. Right. And we don't. No, oh, absolutely not. I mean, at the end of the day, if you uh, get a beautiful bunk bed for your kids, they start creating memories with that right out of the gate. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's just not a good thing for anybody involved. Um, you know, our core values and the way, what we stand for and taking care of our customers it's never a good feeling to go up to a house and for one reason or another, whether the customer decided, you know, they, they just don't, they can't uh, afford it anymore or maybe they're moving or their circumstances changed, whatever that may be, um, that we're there to pick it up. Our goal is to be uh, bringing things to people and at all costs allow them to keep that work within the budget they have. Um, but I think on the front side, that's where it's important. And to your point, it's too easy just to go into a store and everybody just, yeah, we'll give you this and we'll give you that. And we'll just, we'll give you this small weekly rate, but we'll do it across multiple different agreements. And before you know it, you're up to a $200 payment every single week. And that's, maybe that doesn't work for your budget. That's irresponsible on our part if we do that. 
the goal is, hey, what works for you that your quality of life as it stands right now stays the same? Um, but you can also get something you really want or need and just take a small portion of your, your income and put it towards that. And it's a win for you, it's a win for us, and everything's awesome. And that's how we build, I think, those long-term relationships to what we talked about uh, earlier, where people come to us over and over again because they have a really good game plan. Hey, I'd like this. They let us know on their wish list. Hey, I want these two or three items. When they start, when they're ready or they're, you know, they get a promotion at work, they have a little bit extra money to work with, they come see us. Sure, we'll hook you up with this next item and we deliver it right away. And we just keep working on that until they eventually get all the things that they're looking for. So I think that was what makes it really, really uh, unique about us is that we work within the confines of people's budgets, but we also give game plans on how we're going to get there so they get everything they're looking for. Yeah, and, and back to what you were saying about the lifetime reinstatement, um, I'd like to bring that back up because I, I don't know that that's something that all of our competitors offer. Um, and, and one of the things that, that we do offer and one of the things that we do understand is that life happens. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're renting a, a six-inch TV and um, your car breaks down and, you know, you have to spend some um, unforeseen money on the car repair, um, obviously with that being a priority in your life, and you can't afford that 86-inch TV, uh, we offer um, lifetime reinstatement, and, and another piece of that is a pickup and hold. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're unable to afford that TV, we'll, we'll hold it for you. We'll keep it at the store. We're, like, storing it. You don't have to pay on it while we have it. And then once you're back in a place where you're ready to pick up and, and go at it again, you start right where you left off. Again, all that money that you, you know, had put into it is right back there, and, and it's like, you know, nothing was missed. Um, and again, you know, if, if that unforeseen life event um, happens to be, you know, a little bit longer term than, than it's expected, um, and you come back a year, two, seven years later, um, obviously it's not going to be the same product, but we will look into the, the cost, the model, and, and give you something similar mm -hmm. um, in, in, in comparison um, with 100% of the money you put into it right back at it. And again, there's no limit on that, no time, no time limit on that. Um, and you pick up right where you left off. Yeah, that's a really, I think that's probably one of the most interesting aspects of, of what we do because the one of those misconceptions is, well, if my life circumstance changes, heaven forbid I have some type of medical issue or something happens to my house or um, my car, to your point, that if I have to return this, then my investment's now gone. And that's, that would simply oppose who we are. Because at the end of the day, you entrusted us to get you a quality product and solve a problem for you. Sometimes that problem is just as simple as, hey, we just need a new dining room table because we like to sit around and eat dinner together. Well, we're all on board with that. And if your circumstances change that you have to return that to us, we want to make sure as quickly as we can get you back into where you were. So yeah, 100%. <clears throat> when people uh, have issues, we want to know about them. That's where that relationship and that communication comes into play. Where once that stuff happens, sure, no problem. You return it back to us. If it's a short-term thing, we'll hold it a few weeks. No problem. Get it back out to you and you're good to go. If it's a little bit longer term, no problem. We're gonna keep those notes and we're gonna know what happened. So when you are in a better position, come see us. We're still gonna protect your investment and make sure that you're back into something. If we can't get it, we will get it as close to what you had before and ensure that you know, you're know you back to where you started or at least where you were before you uh, came across whatever circumstances they were. So in terms of misconceptions, we touched on cost and some of the, the uh, misconceptions with that and, and how much you're going to pay for an item. Let's, let's talk about returns and, and items coming back and, and what that pre-rented or used inventory uh, misconception looks like. Oh, sure. I mean, that's a big one because I think a lot of people might look at when they go into a rent-to-own, uh, they'll assume that what they're going to get is, is, is merchandise that isn't very good maybe stuff that was in a garage or sitting out behind the house in the rain and whatnot. And that's simply not true. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, if, well actually in most if not all cases, if something comes back and we are not comfortable putting it in front of our own 
family or friends, then we're simply not going to you know, put it out on our sales floor to go out and do a customer's home. Uh, we have a pretty regimented process on how things have to work. We have a five-star cleaning checklist, and it's, uh, it really sets the standard for what we need to do. So when something comes into our store, we have to make sure and inspect it, make sure there's no issues with it, um, no, no structural issues. If there's something broken or torn, we're going to obviously try to get that repaired um, and taken care of. If it's something that can't be repaired, we're just going to get rid of it. But if it gets through that process and we determine that, okay, this is in good shape, then we're going to go through and we're going to clean it, we're going to sterilize it, we're going to ensure that we treat it um, according to the state guidelines, that it's, it's safe to go in someone's home, and then we're going to price it accordingly. Um, the goal being, if you can save a bunch of money on it, what looks near new, then why wouldn't we offer that to you and get you taken care of? Um, but if it's something that, even though we might sew some things up, then we're gonna price it pretty aggressively so that you can get a really good deal on it. Because maybe, uh, maybe you've got a new puppy, and for those of us that have ever had new puppies before, understand that they can cause some, some problems with some furniture. So there's always a place for something that has some, some wear on it maybe. Um, it's been used a little bit, but the investment's gonna be minimal for what will potentially happen. So I think it's a win-win. And then once said puppy grows up a little bit and isn't, isn't quite as much of a terror, they can turn around and upgrade that if they'd like to, and they're, they're good to go. Yeah, I will say I know that it's a very thorough uh, cleaning and inspection process mm -hmm. with pre-rented items. Um, and then um, also the, the discounts that follow are always uh, very generous in mm -hmm. terms of um, trying to give it you know, the right home and, and, and get it out to you know, someone that can, can still utilize that, that merchandise. Um, and I, I would touch on as well as, or say as well that um, I think maybe there's a misconception that we try to take used things and sell them as if they were new. And um, I can say that that is not ever the case no. where, where uh, one, is against the law, and, and two, um, uh, again, refurbishing that item and discounting it for our customers um, is almost an exciting, an exciting part because, you know, we get to offer them this, you know, great deal on this furniture that is hardly used or looks great or, or again, you know, maybe it's, um, you know, a, a cheaper set for their first apartment and it's, you know, just what they need is in their budget and um, so that, that being part of the process um, as well as, is, you know, I would say, yeah, that's, it's uh, a misconception that um, should be squashed. Oh yeah, and the other thing to remember is there are certain things, like for instance, you may have, um, I don't know, you're setting your gym up outside, you want to put a, a chair outside or put a sofa outside, see it a hundred times. Um, if, if we have something that fits in that zone, then you can spend a little bit of money and get something that's good for that. And to your point, the, the process of, of cleaning it to the, to the very best that we can to get it as near new as possible, that's a win. But the other win is it still has the same protections on it when we rent it to you as it would if it was brand new. So if you have an issue with something that is something that is discounted, you take it home. If you have an issue with a spring or something inside your sofa and we can take care of that for you, we're still going to service it while you're renting it. So you're also getting the benefit of uh, if it was new, even if it was pre-rented before. So it's a win-win for the customer. They don't feel like we're never going to leave them flapping out in the breeze. They're always going to have some support back at the store that we're going to take care of them. Yeah. And just to, to clarify, I don't know that if, if it was mentioned earlier that, that that delivery, that setup, that service is all free. It's mm -hmm. all part of the, the customer service that we provide. Mm -hmm. There's no extra charge for that. I know there's, uh, some, there's some competitors out there that will charge ahead of time just in case there's service required. Um, it's built into the price. Um, it's, it's a free service that we, we provide and um, it definitely makes the customer service top notch. Oh, for sure. And if you want to know why we get uh, all the Google reviews we get, it's because we take care of problems as soon as they happen. Um, you're not going to wait two to three weeks for us to address your issue. Um, if, if something happens that you're not getting a response right away, reach out to the store. You always have access to that. You always have access to people that are outside of the, the store team that can help support and help you with those things. So I think that gives 
customers as many levels of communication as they need to get their problem solved. Yeah. All right, so um, all great stuff there for sure. Um.